Hello, welcome to the second tutorial in a series of four. We have just completed the Platform Wizard tutorial where we built a custom operating system in seven easy steps. And as you can see, we're now looking at the Platform Builder tool. It has included the Emule underscore Demo 1, which is the operating system we created in the Platform Wizard, off to the left-hand side. Now if I expand this, you can see the different device drivers and components we included in that operating system. Off to the right-hand side is what we call the Platform Builder Catalog. And the Platform Builder Catalog includes all of the components included in Windows CE.NET 4.2. There are almost 400 different components included in this catalog. And one thing important to note is that it's completely extensible. If a third party develops a device driver, you can include that device driver into the catalog. So it's not fixed or limited to the components included in it as it stands today. Looking at the catalog, you can see there are a number of board support packages as we saw in the platform wizard. There are hundreds of core operating system features included. And if we expand this, you can see end user applications like ActiveSync or Terminal Emulator, various different networking and communications protocols, different types of servers, and so on. There are also myriad device drivers included including IEEE 1394, various display and audio drivers, all included in the device drivers folder. And as I said earlier, a third party can create various device drivers that can be included in this catalog as well. Now let's say that you want to pull in a specific component that you didn't pull in using the platform wizard. You can find these components in a number of ways. You could expand the different folders, as I showed you earlier, and, and select those components. Let's say we'd like to pull in the .NET Compact Framework. I can select it this way by, by searching through the different folders and finding the .NET Compact Framework, or I can simply go back up to the catalog, right-click, and select Find. So I'd like it to find the .NET Compact Framework, and as you can see, Platform Builder highlighted that component for me automatically, so I didn't have to go searching through the various folders. Now, I didn't include the .NET Compact Framework in my original operating system, and I'd like to include it now. Before I include the .NET Compact Framework in my operating system, I'd like to know the various features included. So I'd like to know things like size. So I right-click on the, on the component, scroll down to Properties, and now you can see the .NET Compact Framework is a modest 1151K. I can select on the Variables tab and see the sysgen associated with it. And then I can see the different CPUs and configurations supported with the .NET Compact Framework. Now, as you know, we selected ARM and Emulator in the Platform Wizard earlier, so I can see that the .NET Compact Framework is supported by those. And notice here under Supported Configurations, I've got support here for display-based devices, but the .NET Compact Framework currently doesn't, doesn't support headless devices. There would be another variable here, another configuration, that would say that it supported headless. When the .NET Compact Framework does support headless, that will be added to the supported configurations. So now that we know what the .NET Compact Framework entails, I'd like to include it in my operating system on the left-hand side of the screen. We can do this in a number of ways. We can simply select it and drag it over to the left-hand side, or I can simply highlight it, right-click, and select Add to Platform. Now this will take just a moment. And now the .NET Compact Framework is being added to my operating system. So a couple of things that we'd like to look at here is the different types of build options using Windows CE 4.2. If I drop down the, the dialog box here, you can see that there are four different types of build options. So there's two for each of the ARM and emulator BSPs we selected, a release and a debug for each. This one automatically defaulted to, the, defaulted to the Emulator x86 release. So let's select that. And then if we want to look at the various settings, we can go to Platform, Settings, and check at the different um, independent options for each particular build. So under here, you can see the build options. I can select Enable Full Kernel Mode, Enable Image for, for Flash, so I can select individually these different build options should I choose to. On the locale tag, you can see that we also support myriad different types of language and locales. 
The ones that our emulator currently supports are all of the different languages supported and highlighted here. I can also select another, Chinese, Arabic, and then I simply click OK. So now what we should do is we can choose our build options. So we select on build and build platform. This generally takes about 10 minutes, and in the lower left-hand screen under the build tag, you can see the various components that have been added and as the image is being compiled to, to finalize in an nk.bin file. One thing I did want to highlight as well is when you're looking at the different types of build options, we had release and debug at the drop-down. The debug allows you to set various breakpoints, look at the call stacks, and trace, vari trace variables. That's another option you have in the, build, the various build options. The next tutorial we'll move on to is the emulator in Windows CE.NET tutorial, the third in our series of four.